Thank you. Good evening. It's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is uh, VHB for some uh, minor changes to the senior center. So this is the updated set. This is just the center. That's just the plan to yeah. change the effect of oh, Yeah. Okay. Cool. And while he's setting up, we owed you a rendering. So this is the this is the rendering. Okay. I'll go with that. Good evening. My name is Jeff Gallardo. I'm a project engineer with VHB. And we're here tonight, um, mostly with Phil Palumbo from Colliers. Uh, we're here tonight just to uh, submit and present uh, some of the minor changes to the Senior Center project. If you, the plants that you have, you'll see uh, what we've done is we added a bullet list of those changes right in the cover sheet. Um, so they're, they're clear. Um, also for this set, we have, you'll notice that it's the original set that was submitted that you guys have on record uh, shows the library plans, but I did put a note under there that this submission uh, will not include anything from the library since we're only making changes for the senior center. <coughs> so what I'll do is I'll, you'll have the, the list there. I'll flip to some of the sheets that will show the changes. This is the overall plan. Um, and I'll just shoot right to 102 to show the blow up of the senior center. So the first change uh, I want to point out here is the building footprint. The square footage stayed the same, however there was just a minor uh, change in the footprint of the front of the building. Um, and you'll see that the, um, the, the jogs in the building is a, a hair different than what they were in the prior submittal. Uh, by doing that, we had to just slide some of the roof leaders here and there just to make the connections into the underground stormwater management system. Um, along the uh, south side of the building, we added three, one here, here, and here, uh, signs for no parking um, for uh, fire lane parking, uh, per the fire chief, I think he's here tonight somewhere. Um, and then also in the front of the building where we have the loading zone, where it's painted hatch on the ground, uh, we have it originally called that as drop-off zone, but what we've done is we added no parking to prevent anybody from sitting there. Um, it's just drop off and leave. Uh, that way it's clear for, for, for fire, fire zone. Um, we added uh, one light pole in this little end island here. And then a light pole over here was shifted over um, two or three feet. Uh, and that uh, will be reflected on the photometrics plan. That is part of this set. <coughs> uh, landscaping through the Conservation Commission. Um, we actually uh, had some comments back from them. And uh, maybe I can shoot right to C200 if you'd like. back rear of the site you'll see that there's that 35 foot no disturb zone so what they've asked us to do is introduce some plantings along that buffer zone um, to prevent anybody from any um, snow or you know yard debris clippings being pushed in within that 35 foot no disturb to eliminate any any impact to the wetlands so you'll see along here there's uh, a couple different varieties uh, species of plantings um, as well as we continue to have the screening for some of the uh, above ground structures in the back, condensing units, generator. That's away from the Broward Hill? Uh, yeah, so, um, sorry to point out, the, the, the property line is right here. 
Where's the property line? Yeah, let me just show you on here. Property line, see that's a bound right there, so there's the property line. But the 35 foot wetland, no disturb, is right here. So those plantings right here, the VCs and the CRs, will just mimic that line. So there's room on the other side to maintain those grounds. Right, yeah, so they just didn't want any grass clippings to be pushed close to the wetlands or, you know, any snow. Yeah, there's water in there every side. Over yeah. oh, right here, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. <coughs> so by doing that, we actually, you'll see on the erosion control, um, it changed the limit of work line. So the limit of work line used to be here along the property line. We basically brought, for you know, for their submission, we brought it up to here. So there'd be no work past, past there, other than just removing the existing paint that's there and replanting the grass. Uh, we I'll probably just pointed out here, prior to this middle, we had a monument sign located right up in this area that's now been removed. And I think, Phil, did you just give them the yeah, so oh, yeah. on that run, you'll see they elected to go with um, a building mounted sign on the front side, the building can go on that. So, so you replaced the monument sign with this one? Correct. Okay, and a peak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I could probably, yeah, that's exactly what it shows on the uh, underscore right here, building elevation. So you'll see it right here on the, the peak right there. Okay. Is there a sign at all facing route 9 on that? I'm sorry. And you, you, you can see that from Route 9, right? That building? Uh, this will be, this is the front of the building, so right here. So, no, so along along Route 9, you won't see that building on the side. No, I thought maybe I have another one on the uh, corner. You haven't collectively decided on a sign at the street line yet, have you? No, we're coordinating with the library team on that. Roughly the size of the sign on the building? Ooh, um, I can find that out. Probably something similar that they have already. Uh, he doesn't have any of I can, I can get that for you. Yeah, just, just for the record. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's under the limit, but it's what I mean. It's the point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that, that wraps up the changes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there's one other item I need to add. So we gave you the rendering. The other item that was in the site plan approval for you guys was to go over roof color selection. Okay. So the senior center building committee voted to go with this weather slate option. Okay. Um, and I think per the site plan approval, you guys need to I mean, I was just talking about Weathered slate. Yeah. So that this is going to be the basis of design. Obviously, a roofing contractor can submit a different manufacturer, but we'll enforce that they meet that color right. yeah, as closely as possible. Jeff, you mentioned there was going to be no change in the footprint of the building. The the square footage. Total square footage of same. Total square footage stay the same. The majority of the majority of the building here footprint stayed the same. It's just this has a little bit of a different jog. So that's in the reduction of the the one that you preliminary gave to us. It's still three thousand three hundred and fifty square feet. Ten three fifty. Yes. But wasn't there supposed to be some reduction in the size of the building? There was. There, there was. Yeah, yeah, that's that's from the so beginning. From yeah, the beginning. From okay. the uh, November 20th submittal, With last submittal, was, right, was, right. was the oh. same square footage right. as this. Yeah. Right. Right. Way yeah. back, it was, it was, it was larger. Or right. right. something. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. And <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the changes as shown on the plan. The second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, when do you target the date for the construction date? Uh, early March, you want to start. So um, Thursday, the GC's visit was. Of this year? Yeah. Oh. 19.
Peter Watson. the NES one, right? Yeah, this is the Pearson NCS. Yeah, yeah they got a few masses. Oh, so this building is a few masses, but the old rock line is existing. It's too close to the building. So they're going to sell them another piece to meet the four foot setbacks. Oh, okay. The new mass is going to buy that? This, yeah, this, this, this one. So yeah. that, that's the oh, old one. They take it off the tax rolls. Thank you. Thank you. Next is David Riggs. 
Good evening, gentlemen. My name is David Briggs. I own Vision Showcase. Due to the construction and the impending loss of our building, we're moving to 207 Russell Street, uh, Unit 15, the McMillan Group. I got notified at 6 o'clock tonight our sign sample was not ready because they did not know how much square footage was allowed for the building on the sign. What they're proposing is basically a wood painted sign with our name on it, Vision Showcase Eye Care Center. But they didn't know the square footage. Wait, wait, where is, what, where is two, uh, two, what did you say, 207? 207, the new uh, twin buildings. It's uh, by by oh, 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 the uh, right where they the, 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 the yeah. nail, nail place. Yeah, nail yeah. Place. yeah. yeah. And we just approved the dentist. We just passed it. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. taking the other front. 40 square feet. We, yeah. 40 square feet is what you're allowed. 40. 40. Okay. Um, also, I was told to still need to show up because the uh, ladder or monument sign is just going to be a vinyl decal with their name on it on one of the sections to make sure that that was uh, all right. None of the signs would be backlit or illuminated. If it is, it'd be like a. a, a oh, it can be backlit. It can be backlit. Uh, not a illuminated through the sign like what we have originally. Right. Okay. Yes. So we're clear on that. Other than that, I need to submit a sample of the, what the sign will be. Yeah. You okay. can come back in two weeks and show us that. But okay. there should be, you, you've got 40 square feet and you're putting a name on the pylon up front that's along yeah. with the rest of them. Is there any color restrictions? White you're supposed, to, you're supposed to comply with the American, in the, in the uh, what is the words? Historical palette. Historical palette. So it can't be any outlandish colors, but it's like a. It's just a standard red with white border. That should not be a problem. Okay. Also, the, um, McMillan was wanting me to ask too is there anything about window signage that would be prohibited? As an eyeglass place, we have, um, sometimes we have uh, like models with you know the glasses you know for window hangings you, you're allowed the, the zoning bylaw has what you're allowed for window sign i believe you're okay. allowed uh two window sign or something like that okay you win your windows but i might be clear i'm not exactly positive i'll check with but it's in the bylaw okay the the bylaws are okay they'll have it ready now that i can give the size okay okay, okay. Very good evening thank you John McMillan? Architect. For the fire station? Yes. Oh. For the fire station? This is for the fire station? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Does that have anything? Do you want to open the public hearing for the fire station? Uh, before you start, gentlemen, I will have a guy to go to the turn. Do you want to have a Yes, to the turn. Go to the work. Because I'm considered a municipal employee, because I own land abutting the uh, property on which the fire station is going to be built, I'm, I am deemed to have a potential conflict. Therefore, I'm going to have to recuse myself from any debate on this matter, any motions on this matter, and any votes on this matter. So I hereby recuse myself. Okay. The Habit Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, February 19, 2019 beginning at 7.15 p.m. in the Hadley Senior Center meeting room. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of the Town of Hadley for special permits, site plan approval, and erosion of sediment control for approximately a 5,300 square foot fire station to be located on River Drive in North Hadley, approximately across the Sockford Street. The application and plan will be viewed in the Town Clerk's Office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, February 4 and 11. Yes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carlos Nieto from the Berkshire Design Group, um, and I'm here to present the site part of the um, Hadley, North Hadley Fire Substation project. I um, wanted to go quickly and go over the existing conditions, which is this, this survey that I'm showing here. Um, just to place you, um, this is Stockbridge Road, River Drive, this is north, that is going south. This is our parcel. Um, 9.15 acres uh, of land. Um, approximately, we have um, 
area of resource uh, or what's back here, and I think there's going to be better shown in the existing conditions. There are some resource areas on the back of the property, but it doesn't really affect the area where we are um, locating the building. We were in front of Concom to uh, show them that and to for them to approve the delineation of the resources that were uh, back there. So resource area-wise, uh, the parcel doesn't have any issues. Um, currently, it is a crop field, uh, fairly flat, uh, except for a, a knoll or an elevation about seven, six to seven feet that happens on the uh, north side of the parcel. Uh, as you get to the back of the parcel, it drops significantly as it goes to the uh, abutting property, but for the most part, it is a, f a flat parcel. Um, and then we um, want to uh, present the proposed buildings. So this is the proposed fire station. This is a smaller scale, 20 scale, so that's why you're not seeing the whole site as you were seeing here. I had, we had to zoom in to create the plans for you. Um, but what you're seeing here is uh, start off the building for the fire station itself, two curb cuts on River Road, one for the Apparatus Bay, one for a public entrance and parking area on the side, and also to access the back of the, uh, of the fire station. Um, there will be one through bay on the fire station uh, as we are showing right now. So this also would be the way to access the back bay of the fire station. Um, the, there are th one main public entrance right in front of the, of the building which has uh, an accessible parking space and it's at, at grade. So the idea is that it's all accessible. The building is a well, one story building um, as you probably saw on, on the application itself. Um, and then some public area for, from area for some public spaces and then most of the rest of this what we're showing is going to be the parking spaces for the people using the actual fire station on the on on the back end of the uh, prop of the uh, area of the project we're, we're going to have a, a trash receptacle that's going to be um, screened uh, as well as the parking lots are going to be screened with uh, shrubs and um, uh, berms or, or elevations that are going to be on the side in here so that we don't have direct uh, um, sites into the parking lot itself. Uh, there are about five, um, well, one and two double uh, lights uh, on the project to illuminate and create safety on the parking area itself. There will be one 40 square foot uh, sign on the entrance um, which will be illuminated. Um, and it would be the same as uh, the one on the existing fire station. So that's the, the look of the actual sign. Um, the, we will have a 20, this is a 24 foot wide curb cut, and then we are providing a 37 uh, foot wide curb cut for the uh, two apparatus bays, which is what you're, you're seeing on this side. Um, as, as we go through uh, some of the um, utilities on the site, uh, the whole site is sheet flowed, so most of this parking lot is draining um, without having structures and going over but vegetated areas to remove any um, uh, suspended solids and to clean. Um, and then it goes into some a sh one shallow, single shallow um, detention basin, very shallow. Um, the idea is about two, maybe three feet, but in a very wide area, so it's, it's easy to maintain and only grass. Um, there will be an overflow to that um, in the event of, of a great storm that uh, surpasses the capacity and there's an overflow that will go to a catch basin uh, right on the um, on River Road. Um, for the most part, for demolition and erosion control, the site is a very pretty much open. There's really nothing, nothing there. It's just crop field. So. Um, we are showing a limit of work, which it's around about two acres of disturbance that we're doing within the site. Um, erosion control measures uh, surrounding the area of where the work is going to be done to uh, vehicle track pads to prevent any erosion.
the building will be served by town water, town sewer, um, and as we said, the drainage system is going to comp uh, comprise of a uh, shallow retaining uh, basin, and then all the water is going to be sheet flowed and then filtered through the grass area into it. Um, there, this is the uh, overflow pipe that we uh, had talked about before. Uh, the design is for a uh, hundred year storms to be kept within the site, um, 80, uh, more than 80% TSS removal. Um, so it complies with all regulations in that sense for drainage. Um, that's the plan of the MS4, the new MS4? Yeah, the MS4 is the separation between um, sewer and, 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 and drainage. In this case, it meets all the state regulations and the town regulations. As it was, and needless to say, uh, the, uh, the whole site was reviewed by a third party, and they reviewed all the uh, drainage, and they had very minor comments, uh, basically two minor comments in regards to it, and nothing really in regards to the drainage system. Uh, yes. MS4 is directed against the cross between water and sewer. It's sewer. Mm -hmm. That is its primary yes. job, right? Yes, and in and, and this case we're totally right. separated, both of those. Um, and in particular, when we go into the drain, uh, the sewer system, we will uh, we'll have a, a contamination tank that will handle all the drainage that happens within the uh, actual apparatus bay, so any contaminants will go there. And that's a type of tank that gets serviced and it separates oils and other contaminants. And then um, it connects them to the sewer system. And we have two manholes and then connecting to the uh, municipal sewer system at the end of, basically at the end of this line. And the same as the drainage. That's where, where does that sewer end? There's a manhole on, off the road? On, on, on the actual uh, center of the road um, on River Drive. And this is the sewer that uh, goes. Well, where is it, it going to? Where directly is going into the property? Is that, is it's right there. That's that's no, our from the, I know from the manhole. Yep. You go into where the, that manhole? Yeah. And this is an internal manhole that we propose inside of our property just to change directions. So then that manhole there could be tapped in the future for future development. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the other reasons why we are, we we have it right right there. And then we have two one other manhole again just to. Um, handle the changing in directions from that, um, for all the pipes that are coming in from the from the actual building. How deep are those manholes there? Um, the manhole, I believe the new sanitary manhole, 153 to 146, so these are about seven feet, six to seven feet. Yeah. To the bottom there. So 146 to 153. Yeah, because that's the high end from the pump station. Mm -hmm. And we're and we and, and we're right at the threshold of of of, of, of getting to that uh, yeah. uh, next manhole. Um, in in regards to the utilities, we've also uh, water and electric has been laid out in a way in the same way that the sewer having that extra manhole that uh, we've provided water all the way to the end of the uh, back of the project. So there is a, a main uh, that goes in six inch main that goes and ends in a hydrant right now for future, any future use that wanted to happen there so that there is water on the back of the property um, and then it splits to, to our, our what building. Si what size is the main that you're tapping into? We are tapping into, I believe, there's a 12 inch main and uh, and then we have, yeah, a 12 inch mean. Okay. My question, you, you end in it with a six inch. Oh, it, there's first, first of all, when we start out, uh, we're connecting water service with a 12 by eight tapping sleeve. So a reducer as we go from the main. From 12 to eight. Yes. And then from there, we are moving all the way. We, we have another reducer, an eight to six. Why, Why are you Why? reducing that and not leaving it eight all the way for future tappings? Well, we, we could tap on that eight that's in here, the yeah, main one, you, and then we... Then you're going to go across and dig up the parking lot. Oh, yeah, and then we... Oh, it, where is it? This, this, this eight is runs across the grass area right here. Yes, that's a, it keeps going into the grass. Okay. Oh, well, I thought you, the way you were looking, it was going this way. No, it, it's, it stops here, and the idea is that then... It, yeah, we have the two mains that are going into our building, one fire service and then the uh, domestic service, and then it splits again and goes into our fire hydrant at the back. And then we've also laid out two uh, electric conduits, uh, again, 
for fu any future use coming out of the mechanical room so that we can um, um, have electric on the back and, and have it outside of the parking lot so we don't have to dig out the parking lot to meet the electric. Um, so as far as, as site utilities, as I mentioned, there are four uh, light posts in, in the site. Um, but, and then there are several uh, pads, uh, one for a transform, for a, sorry, for a uh, generator. generator. And then we have one for the HVAC on the back. So we've kept it on the back so it's not visible and not visible from the road. How much noise out of those things going north and south to the house to the south and the house to the north? So, sorry, what? What's the, what's the DBA rating of the generator? We'll need that. We'll need that. And, and a, that's the MEP, the mechanical engineer. engineer. Uh, so we will have, you'll ask the question to the mechanical engineer at that point. Do you know? Uh, we'll, we'll get it to him. Okay. Yeah. That's a mechanical engineer. Um, so um, the two pads for the two, um, uh, for HVAC and then for the, uh, and then the transformer is gonna be, instead of having a pad and a transformer, because of the use, we can have a transformer on the pole and that's so the transformer is going to be in the pole, so there won't be a, an, an extra transformer on, on the site. Um, it's one little detail that I, I, we, I didn't talk about. We have a future bay, um, so there's space for a future bay that could happen on this side, and the idea is that there's still some, uh, we've left the space uh, available so that there could be uh, circulation. We left most of our utilities out of that area. Uh, that generator will be uh, powered by two uh, propane tanks that are going to be buried. So they're underground propane tax on the on the outside edge. Um, Are they further away for the future uh, expansion of gas tanks? I believe from again from from the uh, uh, MEP, I believe that this is sufficient for the uh, generator and some extra. So yes, there's space for expansion. But if any reason the, that station is expanded to the north. Mm -hmm. Where, how far away from the parking lot, and if they have to extend the swing at the next extra door on the north end? If they had to extend, yeah, where well, you got that where your finger is, ex yeah. Extended building is extended. Yep. You would have to black top the back and put another door in. Basically, you would black top uh, here, and yes, would, there would be an would extension of the building and a, on, a, on the edge of them or away from them. Away from those tanks. I mean, we were still probably a good 10 feet away or more than 20 feet away from those tanks. Okay, so that's plenty of room for expansion. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the idea was that we left the space uh, so that we could do that, uh, grading-wise and utility-wise. Mm -hmm. um, so we got the two gas tanks. Um, I think utility-wise, I've, I've run through all the utilities on the, on the, on the building itself. <laughs> The water drainage, the overflow goes into the catch basin. Where does the catch basin go? Does it go? Eventually, it keeps going uh, south. South. Into and the pond. eventually ends. It ends up in Warner Pond. Warner Pond, not the, yeah. not the river. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are at kind of a high point, so everything goes either that way or this way. Yeah. So this is the end of both the uh, drainage uh, line and also our, our sewer line. Carlos, what's the inver in invert height on that drainage that? You're tapping in your overflow pipe. The invert, the invert. down in the actual catch basin, the right. invert is 148, 48. And the, the surface is 152, right there. Oh, you mean, okay, sorry, the invert out of the actual overflow? Right. Uh, inverse 151.5, um, and what we've done is we've basically done a head wall there. So we're not, we don't have a catch basin that goes way deep because the issue what we have is it's such a long run to get a, 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 have this overflow that if we were to put any structure that went deeper, you know, deep, um, that would, would, be, would make it really impossible to hit that invert. So what we have is basically a, um, a, just a, a pipe with a concrete uh, right at the edge so that water would go in and then drain down to our to our couch basin. Yeah, and the, yeah, and yeah, drainage pipe is almost flat. Yes, almost flat. Uh, we are at 1.1%. Um, it's a 12 inch and, and it's, you know, again, it's because it's an overflow, it's higher than, you know, it's, it's set back from the um, bottom of these catch basins. So the catch basin can retain all the water unless there is a great event and then it would overflow. Um, 
Other you know, side features, again, we have some berms. There, are, there is a multi-use a multi for those. First of all is to create some privacy into the parking lot and, and, and screening into the parking lot, so we don't, we don't want to have that. We've set them back so that there is plenty of space for cars to go out away from that berm so they can have sight lines on both sides. The other reasoning is that the site in itself, because it was an old agricultural uh, use, uh, the soil conditions, there is some contaminants on the soil, meaning there was pesticides and uh, herbicides and that sort of thing that was used. And we're trying to keep as much of the material within the site so that we don't have to spend any money on getting it, you know, trucking it out of the site, being that it would have some pesticides and other materials. So the berms are also multifunctional to to be able to keep some of that soil in the site and not have to uh, take it out of the site. Is um, there, Carlos, is there any recovery mantles to take care of? There's a, say, a, a leaky gas tank, some parts in there. Well, the, what's that do? Does that run into, the, into that little retainage? And into well, the anything that happens tank? within the building itself, so if there's anything that, you know, a leaky tank on a car or, or a vehicle well, inside. I'm not talking about the building car, so I'm talking about the parking lot okay. where cars park. Yes, so uh, when you have a um, car parked here, the, uh, the design takes into consideration, that's why our basing is set back from the actual parking lot. This whole uh, grass strip is what uh, becomes the filter for any, any contaminants, any uh, suspended solids, and that's allowed by, by regulation. Yeah, it's suspended, but oil floats to the top, oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Is there any provisions? Y yes, there to will catch be. That? At the catch basin, there will be a hood uh, for the catch at the catch basin end. Um, and again, any of the soil, uh, the soil would would grab some of that oil too. Um, if if because it does float, but when water goes away, then it gets trapped in that first layer of soil and and. and uh, how, how are we supposed to grab that oil before it gets onto a place that perks? It, it depends on the design. That's why we what this filter strip works for is to do that for well, us. Under the MS law, doesn't it require that you do something like that so it doesn't get into? So we can go with uh, what's called a um, when you have a traditional system of catch basins and pipes and manholes. Normally, you would have a STCC a. a um, a, um, a drainage, uh, uh, recovery yeah, or, or a, 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 what we call a storm scepter. Uh, it's like when you say Kleenex, a storm scepter is a manufacturer, but it, it's that, that type of structure. So you can go with that in a typical uh, system. But if you're doing a system where you're sheet flowing everything, basically your area where you're trapping all those, anything that uh, goes on is on that grass and on that cat, on that um, area of the. In, in, you know, infiltration and the filter that happens with the uh, vegetation that gets grown here and then uh, anything that gets all the way to the manhole uh, to the catch basin it would be trapped by the hood and the sump of the catch basin. So the town cannot get in trouble if there is no. a gas spill there and it goes out and contaminates well, that it, field there? In, in, in event of a large gas spill it's... Over five gallons, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, is it required? Yeah. The design is meant for uh, re removing any contaminants. If you have a big gas spill, you have to handle the gas spill. That you know, you cannot rely just on on the grass for that. But that's any system would be like if you were in the parking lot here with catch basins. If there's a big gas, um, you know, a, a large amount of gas that gets spilled, you would have to handle it on site. I know, but uh, for uh, small amounts of oil or gas that comes off of the vehicles. It, it, the filter strip on the on the actual grass is what basically filters all that, and then the. Now, what kind of filter? What's that filter strip made of? It's grass. It's grass and soil. So that's how and and that's how you do systems that are above ground and not go underground or don't go into catch basins. When you're trying to do uh, sheet flowing through a site, that's that's how we do it. So there is no way because of the elevation, because of the invert. Mm -hmm. Elevation where the stormwater goes into, it's in basically impossible to put manholes anywhere on that site. Because you would, that. yeah, you would end up at such a lower elevation that then it would be really hard to hit our, our overflow well, at the end. What I, what, what also, what I'm saying is, say if there was a spill there, we have made other businesses put in the 
this storm water separator. Yeah, and SDCs. Separates yeah. oils and gases from the water. Mm -hmm. I can't believe in my head that grass is a filter. But it, it is, and the regulations and allows you to have. DEP yes. And DEP yeah. And and of, obviously DEP. the third party engineer would have uh, commented if he felt that this well, wasn't I'm needed. I'm asking that of you because I don't know that answer. So yes. It, so the filter strip and it's what uh, grabs any suspended solids, any oils, and and grabs them before it goes into the uh, basin itself. The basin is also vegetated, so any oils also could uh, grab there, and then the, at the end you would have a hood at your catch basin so the, if, of any oils that go in there. Uh, and it is a DEP accepted method of, of handling a parking lot. I've, I've got a question. Yes. In the past, the planning board did not allow anyone to drain into the town drainage system. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have an exemption? No, not at all. Um, it's, it, it was a, it's allowed. Um, well, there are no, areas it in... A, it was a town law that we were told mm -hmm. by previous uh, building, uh, superintendents of the highway that no hook up, no drainage would go into the town drainage system. Now, do we have an exemption to allow this particular building to go into the town drainage system? So again, I, I because this was vetted between our engineers and the highway highway soup or the okay. DPW. We have a new we have a new DPW guy. So I assume the selectmen made that decision way back when. I would like to see something in writing that authorizes the drainage system. And are we going to treat the town differently than we are going to treat? Uh, private buildings. No, it would be exactly the same. Um, actually, our no, no, engineers... That's, that's our question. No, we don't allow a private... If, if this was Joe Small Company, they wouldn't put it into the town right. system. It's as, as I understand, and my engineer is going to be out with the city, the town engineer on Thursday out on site to review everything. Our understanding is that he was he allowed well, this he's, design. He's very new at the job. I think this is... This is this decision is above his pay grade. This, this, this I, the board of selectmen. I think the board of okay. selectmen is going to have to make that decision. Now, well, if, they, never, wait, if, they, if they make the decision to exempt the town, that kind of bothers me a little bit because uh, when, we, when the federal go government exempts themselves, like for health care, we get upset. Yeah, so I, I think understand. as a business person coming in, they may get upset too that we are looking for a special exemption for the town. Mm -hmm. And so I think, Joyce, that's something I think the select board is going to have to make a decision on. Do we allow an exemption for our town building to hook into the drainage system? And do we allow all businesses to hook into the drainage system? I so. And I just wanted to, just the only thing I wanted to add so is as, as that, what are we looking for is a letter. I'm looking for a letter to say that that would be authorized. All right, I can give you some information on that. I met with the TPW director on two different occasions. Okay. He says he has no problem at all with a town entity going into a town stormwater system. Right. Well, that's... But, he says, I cannot tell you it's probably yes but until he meets with the engineer off the project okay the size of the pipe will handle it and everything else then he will give his because I asked him to email us his thoughts today but he said I can't until he meets this week well I this week. I think Jim is right that's above his pay rate to make that decision new on the job I think it's the select board's decision to make that that determination because I know we're going to get some grief when private developers come in and want to hook into many of them do and we said not allowed so and, and I just wanted to add two things one is that I my understanding was that any project on Russell on, on route 9 uh, because the cash basins are on a state highway they don't allow you to connect to those they do and, not correct and that's in route, in route 9 period. that's correct um, was, but, but my understanding was that outside of, of Route 9 and with this project and the way that it is designed, that it was allowed, but they will be discussed with the engineer and okay. the city, uh, town engineer. You know what happens when they say assume? 
Yes, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I knew about the Russell because we, when you put pointed this out last time, I definitely did all our homework and, and looked yeah. into it. Yeah, um, the state doesn't allow it, so we have to be cognizant that we're going to exempt. Well, okay. Well, you, you just on Russell point. Street outside, it seemed again. I don't. I I will wait for the engineer and the engineer to talk together and, and, okay. and, and figure it out. Um, my understanding is that they could. But don't you have to? Excuse me for a moment. Do you have to take into consideration it, of being a business or not a business also? What do you mean business or non-business? Nobody's allowed to tie into a town. We allow nobody to tie into a town water, town drain system. House, business. Public, private, or otherwise. Because right. we've been told that is the policy. Right. It's your policy. Right. Right. So an individual can't do it, a business can't do it. You have to put language in here, too, about that. Yeah. About the drainage and through the water health on this. So, okay. okay. Yeah. I think uh, utility wise, I've, I've, I've ran everything that I have here for utilities. Um, I don't see anything else that I can give you more detail. In general, the, the site is, I mean, it, it very simple in the sense that it's a flat site and, and um, two entrances, a parking lot, and a building. And that's basically what we have here. All right, there's Shannon. Okay, from okay. the Jim, uh, you have any questions? I don't want. Whoa, 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 we got a ton of questions. I know. Okay. <laughs> but let, let. If I may, yes. If you haven't seen yes. um, the building itself, as far as the uh, exterior appearances, we have renderings for you to look at and colors to have been reviewed by the committee. So uh, this is you, I believe, looking from the northeast. Uh, 5,400 square foot building thereabouts, about 3,000 square feet in the apparatus, and about 2,000 square feet in the office. What's the back look like? You got big doors in the back? Uh, I have one yeah, the one, one same side as the front one. Mm -hmm. so give me those numbers again. Um, roughly 5,400 square feet per building, about 3,000 in the apparatus, 2,000 in the office, and there's like 900 square foot uh, utility mezzanine. You will get these numbers on the revised, on these revised plans that have the table, was one of the comments that the third party engineer asked, and we added those to So when the, when the fire trucks return, do they have to back in, or can they drive around and drive in? That would be Yeah, and actually, these are the tables. There is one bay that is access can be accessed from the back. The second bay cannot be accessed from the back. So that if you wanted to bring in a vehicle in there, depending on how you arrange it, you might be able to go through and then back up. But if it was uh, if this lane was totally blocked uh, at that point, yes, somebody would have to then back up to come into the uh, to the uh, to the apparatus bay. They would have to back up so that they would be facing forward when they come out. But one of the bays has um, it's a drive, a totally drive through. Okay. Who picked the spot exact where this thing is sitting on this lane? We'll, we'll get to it. Give, give us a give us a chance. Let, let, him, let him make the presentation. Yeah, I think I'm, I mean I mean I'm all set with the site and any questions I, I will just okay. I can handle now. Okay. So uh, so the village wood frame, uh, the Smithworth siding, and sanded seam metal roof. Uh, there is an alternate prices commission right to go with the mass question roof. Uh, the colors are basically, as you can see, sort of maroon, fire station red. There's a couple of shades of gray, and there's white trim involved. So we have a little bit of all these colors here, a little bit of this above and below. Uh, and the roof, the roof siding color, I'm sorry, the roof shimmer color is a pretty good match for the top and go so That's the, uh, hey John, what's the picture in this roof? Is that 312? 6 and 12. What is that? Six and twelve. Six and twelve. And there's a uh, cupola on there too that will have a light in it. And uh, you saw the photometrics or the photometrics were part of this. Uh, we're pretty good at photometrics. We, we don't want those. The yeah. We'll lose them. We'll extra weight for nothing. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is this is a better picture if you just if you wanted to talk about sight and sighting. Okay. It, it shows the overall of the whole the whole parcel. As far as the general drainage and stuff like that, utilities, you know, I don't have any real comments on that. But I'm kind of uh, 
I would have thought this would have gone back to town meeting because when town meeting voted on this, they voted to buy the parcel, they voted to put a station there, and no other information went to town meeting to the townspeople about what it would look like. Um, so I'm kind of, so the planning board, if it's not going to go back to town meeting, the planning board is going to be very scrutinizing of this project. Um, I don't claim, I don't, you know, the planning board is not against by any means the fire station in this area. Um, you know, it's a, probably a good idea, probably a necessity, all those things. However, I think the layout of this parcel is extremely poor. Um, coming from driving big trucks, that fire station entrance exit of the main road, that one, I'm to 47, and then having to make a right-hand turn and then a left-hand turn onto Stockbridge Street that is not at a 90-degree intersection is a disaster. Um, that fire station should be moved down so that the entrance is directly in line with Stockbridge Street. I don't know who's the person that located where it is, but that's just bad. Um, an S-turn coming out of a driveway? On the left-hand side, why is there an S-turn coming out of the driveway? Meaning that S-turn. Why is there an S-turn? So that we could have the uh, that driveway to be totally opposite with the Stockbridge Road. Why isn't the main exit not in line with Stockbridge Road? So the logic of this is safety. Meaning a fire truck as it, it comes out in this case will be there's two two safety reasons that that I can uh, quote. One of them being that. There is a turn of a riding here. There is a much straighter line on, on from north to south than from south to north. So, is, is isn't there plans to put? Wouldn't there be? Shouldn't shouldn't there be plans to put a signalized light at Stockbridge entrance so the fire exactly. truck comes out, all traffic stops, Eventually and the fire truck goes across the yeah. intersection? No, we, we haven't proposed a, a light. Uh, That's ridiculous. Who, who's, who's, whose idea is it not to put a signalized light there? Because the amount of traffic that you're going to be getting into this road, no, no. This, for, you mean for this? Yeah. There even, has so been, even, even with that main entrance, there's no way to shut any traffic off. I just want to back up maybe two steps. I, am I beating on the wrong person for this? No, no. I, I can I can let you beat on them anyway. Yes. <laughs> beat like on me. I'm here for that. Carlos likes that. Yes. Um, the again I just wanted to point out that if a fire truck is exiting here, he has to deal with both traffic to and from the north, south, and also from Sarkbridge Road. Also there is a turn or a curve that happens here. So we as a committee and as a designer, we thought that this was a better location as the person, as the fire truck, as it comes out, the only two areas that he's going to be paying more attention would be north and south, and he wouldn't have to have that extra line of traffic coming in. Also, the sight lines are extremely much longer on that side, on the north side, than on the south side. At 800 feet, we have basically a straight <coughs> shot into the entrance. Um, from from the opposite side, at 800 feet, you're you're still you know you're still on the curve as you come around. Um, so, and these are some of the uh, pictures of how it what it looks like as you come around. Um, even though the site is very open, it's still as you're driving, you're looking this way. As you're driving down, you're not necessarily all going to be here looking at what's going on with the fire station. But if once you are beyond this point, about 450 feet, you have a straight shot at the, this entrance, while you will be at about 200 feet uh, by the time you could actually have a very clear shot of, of uh, the secondary entrance. Carlos, uh, I hate to interrupt, but Jim is right. That intersection is going to have a light. And to, to assume that is going to be the only building there, there is going to be something. There's going to be a DPWER, there's going to be something. So, so you have to treat this as a proposed subdivision. You're looking into just like this is the only building that's going to be there. I don't, I don't think we, you're planning ahead or 
I well, hate to say that we have to be the authority to make it plan ahead. That road should be like a subdivision road. Should have the utilities go in there, and so that you can have other buildings. Uh, well, we have the so utilities. Those buildings, those <laughs> trucks. Let's say they're DPW yard. That's probably the next thing I can see on site. But they're going to be coming out of that entrance, and they're going to be facing the same traffic too. Uh, of sight line. So you're going to need a light there eventually. And uh, I concur with Jim. Uh, to put that right in the middle of the parcel, uh, it, it's not, it's like it's our whole parcel and we can do what we want. We have to plan as, as a mall would plan. You're going to have further development in there. The idea is that this driveway could either continue this way so that they would That's have access to the back or could okay, access Carlos, this way. If it's going to continue that way, mm -hmm. why don't you put the water main there? Why don't you put the sewer main there as a subdivision entrance to a mall or to a subdivision? Yeah, what will it? And we and we did that. It, it's all stopped up at the back of our of our fire but, station. But it's not where yeah. one would ordinarily see it on a road. It's within your. Well, we basically what we've done is we've brought in you know, a a water main into our site that then splits into our building and then keeps going back so that there will be access for any type of use that happens well, on the back. Uh, the use mm -hmm. is going to be off your building. Uh, it should be. Well, you, and the two electric are also coming back to the back also in that same sense. So the sewer, so the sewer and the water will go, not on the road. Will be right next to the building. They go um, right, the, the water itself is going through the parking lot and ends up at a hydrant right at the back of okay, the parking lot. My assumption is it's going to go even further. If we extend that road to the back, that's where you have your uh, retention pond. So what are we going to do no, with we, the retention the idea pond? Is that you could basically, the idea is that you can go by the retention pond, no problem. I mean, either no, this no, way or you could go, go this way. straight from Sockbridge Road, it looks like if you're going to go right no, but I mean, you should have another drawing that had to, you know, you can extend this straight, straight up. Well, it looks like it, to me it goes right where the pond is, but... Uh, it, it, so this is not a pond, so it literally will go right next to it. What's, what's the, the, the checkered line for? Uh, checkered line just shows what our remaining uh, developable area within the site is, and just showing um, what's how many acres we're using on one side, how many acres will be left uh, on the other side. Well, you got some on both sides too. That's okay. So there is a, a, again a, a uh, elevation right now, a, a uh, knoll in that area, and yeah, but, but what, but even if we move a bulldoze in eight hours of work and clear that sand yeah, out, that's, no that's, time. Yeah, it's not no. like it's rock. Yeah, if yes. if if we would still have this entrance that we moved the whole um, building to the right, you really are not gaining a lot of space. No, I'm, I'm talking of moving the building to the left so that the, the driveway can come straight out of the fire station right onto yeah, Stockbridge right. Road. Again, the and, so and, 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 and you put a light at the intersection. So it just just for clarity, going forward. The tape and everything. You're talking about the driveway to the equipment bay, not correct. the driveway yeah, to the parking. The area. driveway to the equipment bay. You yeah. would like okay. to. That is a poor design from a truck driving point of view. And and again, the the thought of it was to have a direct connection to um, River Road, having only traffic from north and south, and not having a, a third uh, line of traffic coming in as a fire truck was trying to go out. As far as I'm concerned, on that site, north and south, regardless where that station is on that parcel. I went there before this meeting, mm -hmm. and the eyesight is way by the bowels, you can see right down to the corner. Yes, and, and, and on I, the south, if you move the, if that moved in build further, your line would change from where the car sits to the Stockbridge Road site. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and and so at, wherever that the way I seen that and I just pictured where that station would sit. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, a truck is safer going straight than making all these zigzags. Going straight. Right. Straight across the yeah, to to through right. Stock Bridge. You know, even the light after I I met with uh, Mark Dowling, He's a traffic engineer. I also went to see the traffic engineer with the OT. I, 
And one thing McDonald said, you got emergency vehicles coming out of a site with lights. It's just like you see a police cruiser with lights. That's a big caution sign right there. That's only activated on a truck when they are responding. Ambulance, fire, and rescue all have lights. So I, I think Mark, Mark was talking about two things. First of all, that he felt that the light, the, an actual light that would stop the traffic as a fire truck would come out wasn't necessarily because as the fire truck comes out, especially in this area instead of in the more busy intersection, that there will be clear sight of those of those lights. That's one of the things that Mark was saying that that would identify that there was an emergency. He right. did not think that it was detrimental to have a, a light there, but he didn't think it was necessary. Right. Um, it, so that was. It just makes it more safer. For sure. There's and, no and question about that. It, w would it be? Um, yeah, I I don't think it would take away from safety to have the light. I mean, but, obviously. You know, here we go again. We're gonna. We're looking at this. How much money are we going to add doing this? And if this did get in trouble down the road, you know, a traffic light sitting there with the station over here, if that's activated, that stops the traffic and the, then the truck's going to go all around and makes matters worse. You know what I'm saying? If the traffic light was at the intersection, the intersection. at that site, it is. It wouldn't work well because it would stop the traffic you'd have to have another light up the road. north of the apparatus road exit and versus yet, just one light. And that's the issue with having the four, you know, one, two, three, four, with the emergency vehicles coming out, um, it makes it. And then here's the dangerous thing, is coming back in. You've got to drive up either north, if you're coming back from Stockbridge, or from the south, you got to drive to the north on the road, stop in the middle of the road, and back up. And there's some kind of, um, I was talking to Mike Mason about it, about how many accidents are caused by backing up in the middle of the road. I think, and again, many towns don't allow you to back up off of the driveway, because obviously when you're backing off of a driveway, you're on Well, one way. Carlson mm -hmm. and I talked to you today about it. Yep. It's the same loop they put on the center station. I mean, an extra area. Right. They they drive in and loop around, and they're off the highway. Mm -hmm. And they they got plenty of room to back in that station. And again, if the that, and that would be a possibility of something that could happen in here. Um, but we got because the layout and the elevation of that land, it's the drainage. You can't put it in the catch basin because. That's all you're handling is sheer runoff on this whole project. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're kind of, I mean, of screwed either pushing that building to the north. To the north is, is really not the, as we Wait, keep pushing that building to the north, we're going to have to the issues south, with drainage. And, you and go to the south easier than the north. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, the, 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 as far as where the developer land is on this property, and you'd have to see our site on that larger overall site, but between the resource and the waterfront district, the waterfront uh, setbacks, there is uh, much narrower land uh, out to the north and much more available land to the south, which is where we're trying to maximize future town use. Mm -hmm. If the building were to slide to the south in front of Stockbridge and we were going to put and have to push the um, uh, retention area to the south because that's the natural flow of water, then we would be Limiting the setbacks. Lessening and, and restricting the use of the, of the larger southern side of the property. Yeah. And again, I, and, and I think, you know, visually it seems like it's right in the middle, but our building is really here. This is, our, again, a multi-use entrance that we could use for accessing then the back of the site. Also, this is how we brought all our utilities in. Um, from this point to, from here to here, um, yeah, there is a berm and you could flatten it out. One of the issues would be that then what do we do with all, all that dirt that we need to handle on site? Well, I think you could get rid of that. And then... There's been plenty of people that would take that. Right, that's not, a, that's not an issue. That's not an issue. Yeah. Okay. And as I mentioned before, one of the issues we have with the soils is that there is a study, it is, has contaminants from the past agricultural use of no, the not, not that area. That has really not been farmed. 
where the back part has where the knoll is, there's, 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 that's just sand. Yes, yes. That's a sand. Went down this day. Nobody's yeah. farmed that for. And we were, but we being required for any soils that are from the site, if we were to take them out, they didn't need to be uh, disposed specially. Did you in catch a special that entire, uh, entire, I, I, entire? We were not the ones responsible for that. Yeah, and my yeah. assumption was the whole site. The footprint of the building. Okay. I should say the footprint of our construction zone. The whole site of the project. So this area. The land. Yeah, all the, the whole this is what was tested. The, the footprint the of our construction zone is what we tested. Okay, yeah. that's fine. You didn't yeah, that, 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 that's for the park. That's understandable. Yeah. What you did with this, but the knoll is just sand. Okay. It's probably pretty you clean. Didn't test the knoll. We didn't test the knoll, uh, but I wouldn't. Anyways, it might not be clean. What, what, what contaminants were there? Uh, pesticides, herbicides. Like what? I don't have the report with me, but I can provide it to you. Yeah, would you please? Yeah. yeah. Who actually picked that site? I think it was, a, you know, with the committee. No, I don't want to think. I want to know who was it. Who was it? Well, we Fire sat. Chief, the committee, or that guy sitting there? Would it be possible for me to speak? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, just a little history. Um, so, August 29th of 17, when we passed over the article, that's when there was $5,500 that was put into the fire department budget to actually review the site to make sure it was conducive for this. Uh, they actually did a review of the site, a general review, before they started doing warnings and everything. And it was found that the location where it's sited right now was the best possible site for it because the soil um, the reason why we I have a different view on how the trucks come out onto the onto route 47 it's it's my opinion as a fire chief and as a person who's driven these fire trucks for a long time that we like to have them come to the end of the driveway stop and look at all directions not have the potential of a green light if we're putting a light at Stockbridge where we're accessing it there we have people that drive through green lights, red lights all the time. So the point why I personally think it's better to have them stop, they can look north, south, and then they can also see the traffic coming off of Stockbridge. That was the purpose of that location. It was also a buffer for the neighbors. So we have big, shiny, flashy trucks with headlights on them. We didn't want to be directly across from our neighbors on the east side. So when, if we were going to put that driveway directly across from Stockbridge, that could potentially impact uh, our neighbors. So we were trying to be good neighbors and not have that. As far as turning the building, there was a discussion about that. We would be impacting our, our neighbor to the south, potentially with lights coming out the, if we aim the building a different direction. As far as the turn onto Stockbridge Street for our ladder truck or anything else, it's a pretty wide, it's a pretty wide uh, intersection. Well, and no, all of our, there, right? what's that? You're saying it's easy to turn, but no, no, if no, if there was if there was a vehicle parked, I mean the they're supposed to. I mean obviously they're supposed to be pulling over anyways for emergency vehicles. But uh, my opinion is there's ample room for even our ladder truck. We've taken turns there before, um, even with cars there. We do the we've done the uh, tractor parade. Yes, I just we did uh, after the conversation we did that. That exact same, yes, there's plenty of room. I actually put a car way past the stop line if you look at the aerial image. Um, and yes, the Akarado should be more than more, very free to go all the way around and make that left. What Even is, if you had a vehicle right what here. What is safer, going straight or going around? Well, literally, they wouldn't even have to go around. They would just make the left. Yeah. Well, that's not going straight. Going no, no, straight. I understand. A hard left. So yeah. we would be taking a hard left or a hard right if we were coming out. So we would be taking a hard left and a hard right coming if out. If you were of north the, or south. If we were coming out of that area across from Stockbridge. Look, if Stockbridge so, wasn't there, I wouldn't be saying a damn thing about this. But Stockbridge is there. So, the, so in other words, the, the committee... What I understand here, the committee is the one that picked the site where it's going to be? We had input too, like all the information that I've been, I've been yeah. talking about, traffic, direction. 
Um, we started with the notion that we were going to be against, you know, right across from Stockbridge Road with the public access. Um, and then the, basically the, the design develops also that we didn't want to have this here. So the design developed from there. Well, as Frank you said, the, the lights. Mm -hmm. The neighbor to the south on the corner of 47 Stockbridge is going to get a bigger amount because when the light swings its headlights, everything, not only once, coming out and then swing into the left, you swing through the whole house again. Johnny, can I you got it twice. Hi, Matt, they were, and every evening the lights come into the house. That is not a problem. And when you talk about a fire truck can't take the curb, there's trailer trucks that come down the road and they come and they take the curb on Stockbridge. Plus, the people who work across in the summertime, I see some of the Spanish people take a big truck with boxes on the back, they come right down where the fire station would be, and they would take a right and then a left. And they and I've been there since 2001, and there's never been a problem. So it, I mean, you can take it both ways. I can't say that there won't be an accident one day, but every place is like that. Oh, so that's a Dodge van. Yes, <laughs> that was the emergency button. <laughs> now, uh, I do have driven trucks, all kinds of trucks, except trailer trucks because they bend in the middle. And uh, if you think about it, and the guy's in, in the truck, you're all amped up, and you're leaving the station to make him stop, him or her, to look both ways. It's a much safer deal than just, you know, pull out and you, you get into that bad habit and say, I get the right away and just go. And you don't have the right away. You have to stop. So you I think I think the world where it's where it's put now is probably for the best use of everything. I didn't in the beginning, but the more I thought about it I came around to seeing the point of view. Say what? The more I thought about it the more I came to see the point of view. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. If I can't hear you, I'm going to tell you I can't hear I know. You that. Well, I'm going to speak up good and loud so you can hear me. Good. Not just for us, but it's for the people that are watching this to make it in the film. Well, I'm Sorry. sure they've heard me. I'm thinking of the future. Uh, that, that road where the uh, people are going to drive in the call. Turning radius for big trucks or anything going in there. The these yes. these turning radiuses? Yeah. They're over twenty feet. So the the, the yeah. blacktop is gonna be twenty four feet. Yeah, twenty twenty four feet. Uh the width of the of the uh, road is twenty four feet, then you have you know, twenty twenty Foot radius for the two radius so, uh, on either side. Engineering specs, you've got a cross section of what the uh, the road's going to look like. How many, how much gravel? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. that's a no, no, You don't have to get it out. Okay. But. Yeah, and there, this is actually uh, reinforced so that you can bring in the truck and, and pull all the way through. So. And we looked at the turning radius of bringing in the truck all the way through, and, and it. it can easily make that, cur that turn from either side to go all the way around. But once again, I, I still don't see how where the water main is going and the sewer is going, that it's going to allow for expansion on that site. Well, think, I, of, think of, put your thinking cap on that, you're going to develop that. You oh, own we, that we've had the thinking cap for, for months. <laughs> you, own, you own that parcel and you're going, and you're going to put some other buildings there. In, in, the sewer, they and again, they can, it can veer off from that uh, fire hydrant all the way here. So the um, fire hydrant and the sewer are going to be... The, the f fire hydrant we've used as a, basically a tap so that we can end that main... Eight inch. Yes. Eight inch. And it, the sewer hookup is going to be... And then we have a sewer hookup uh, cat manhole right there. Okay. So we can hook up... I, I don't see the limitations. Uh, we've brought all, all the utilities to the back of the property. Um, you know, if we were to bring him to bring him through here and bring him back here, 
and for the future use, and then having to have this very long connection to the building didn't make any sense. So for us, it was much more efficient to bring him directly through next to the building and take it all the way to the back so that we could use the mass best use of the, of, of, for this part of the project and not have to have a very long you know, main just well, because. I, I know, it's a, it's a public safety concern, and if this were a, a mall or a subdivision going in, we would never allow two two road cuts right there, okay. right next to each other. Yeah. I mean, so this is unique, uh, I, I agree. But, uh, and a lot of the, ex you know, if we, if we look at, there are a lot of uh, uh, examples of fire stations that have this, you know, directly to a road, um, um, instead of having to go through or... The center station has three, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. What? It's got the apparatus, it's got the, the mm -hmm. north, Parking and it's got the police parking. Yeah, right? and it's important to separate those two because you don't want to have any conflict between the emergency vehicle going out and, and then the public entrance. I understand the necessity for, for two curb there, no, no doubt about that. Yep. You can't have one for fire station. No, it would be crazy. In far as far as the sewer and water, Joe, sewer can be put anywhere. If it doesn't meet the grade, it can be by injection pump and pump it uphill downhill whatever water water is all under pressure so it's 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 it can be tapped off right to the south and go anywhere on the property there so that's not an argument or a thing to really find something up here for the, for the future that's in there is the building going to be sprinkled yes it is mm -hmm. yeah, it's, really, it's required you for building that small no, it's not required. It's uh, it's, it's, it's not required, but we want the hazards that are inside of it. But yes, it's just okay. common sense. Oh, I like to make all that kind of money on a building like yeah. that, not sprinkling. It's stupid. And the fire station will be a fire, a fire station. I visited in Worcester County. And this is what the chief said. He they were going to build this with no sprinkle system in it. But look at the amount of equipment, the money you have in that, and that and fire stations do catch fire and burn from the trucks, something shorts out, burns everything. Burnt with a sprinkle system, it stops everything. A hundred percent of sprinkle system in it. So many, I'm hearing the rationale for having the driveway apparatus driveway offset. But if that's the rationale for the apparatus driveway, then why is the access driveway not likewise? The idea was to have that then opposite to Stockbridge Road so that you would have a nice intersection for that. Um, because it's for public use, not emergency use. What's the difference? Well, the emergency use, you don't want any traffic, any conflict or anything coming out of it. You, know, you just want to be able to look both, both ways and go. Where again, we talked about that if you come out on this side, you have Stockbridge Road, and then you have also traffic from both both on the other side. So it's not as as an easy exit as it will be from the other yeah, from I'm this corner. Just kidding. You know, I'm in in normally in design. A, you're creating a four-way intersection where there was only a three-way intersection. You're going to have people now trying to drive across two lanes of traffic. If we had it um, uh, offset to to the side, then we create even more conflict on that intersection because you have the three. And then another curb cut right right off of it. No, I'm just saying have two. Have this just come straight down from the parking area. So do this. Yes. Again, the, the idea was to bring that uh, entrance right to Stockbridge Road. So in future uses, you could it would be a straight line that you could access then the back of the property without having to go through the fire station. How many trips per week do you anticipate? I think we've left that for the chief. He gave us some information. We estimated three. Three trips a week? Three trips a week. I was Let's just assume that the DPW yard goes back there, mm -hmm. talking 50 trips a day. So what would, okay. so we're building this, I think we're a little short-sighted. We're building this for just a fire station, but we have to think about the whole, the whole parcel. I believe, I our, our charge when we did this project, I, this I, project I realize. was to design our building and maximize, you know, design our building correctly and on a budget and maximize the available land for 
so it's flexible for other uses. We don't know what those other uses would be. So in our charge to do this design, we didn't want to do any damage to any future use, take care of our use, and then make it provide the features that would supplement a future use, but not build that future use yet, because we still don't know what it is. Well, it, it, exactly right. I heard it's just what I anticipated. It's me, 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 and unfortunately, we're put in a position of helping the site, and uh, we don't know what the site's going to be, but we do have the plans I don't for the think future. I said it was just me, me, me. No, we, we were going to design our particular site in a way that maximized the use for the town for the other area of the site, give the maximum amount of area, area available so the town would have flexibility in that future use. Then, yeah. as we built our particular facility or designed our particular facility, we would do, we would do no damage to creating any of the future use. We would but stay out of their way. We would provide amenities if they were feasible. I just, you deal, you deal I just have one, one comment to that. If I've heard a question once, I've heard it probably 15, 20 times. Why are they putting something right in the middle of the parcel when if you think about expansion, you could go, you know, north or south, but, but uh, Joe, that's... Uh, when, we, when we first went, and I have to disagree with you, Jim, about taking this project back to town meeting, Number one, when we went to town meeting and we wanted to buy this piece of partial because the other piece in the other center of North Hadley was not going to work for the fire station, so we needed another piece of property. This property became available. There's extra land there. We're maximizing the best that we can by putting the fire station where it is. It was the building committee, also the uh, municipal building committee that also chimed in on it that this was the best spot for this fire station to go so that for future use, and we haven't even talked about, wait a minute, we haven't even talked about what our future use is going to be for that property. So our, our goal was to get some place where we could put a, a sub-fire station in North Hadley. So that was our charge and that was our goal. Well, there's no question that we knew the fire station was going to go here we purchased it. That wasn't my comment. Correct. My, my comment was, that the town has never seen the layout of the fire station on the parcel. Every other project. But that was the charge of the building committee to do that. Who was that? Every, other, every other building project we have ever done in town in the last 30 years, the town has seen where and approximately what the building would look like. We did have a, we did have a, a public period. session. <laughs> With, the, with that. I'm saying town meeting. The town meeting has never seen this project as it says. No. That's my comment. But why Why would they have to? So that they know what they're getting. But they are know what they're getting. We had an X amount of money <coughs> that we were told that we could expend that's on a project. Opinion, that's my opinion. I disagree. True. The town doesn't know what they're getting. Well, I think it's okay. going to be a nice building. <laughs> and it's going to be functional. Can I just ask a question on that, just so yeah. I can clarify in my head? When you say the town doesn't know what they're getting as far as the building, or as far as the project appearance itself, okay. lay out what it looks like. Because the building is exactly the same as what it was going to be on the ball field site, and there's absolutely nothing different about that structure, even the exterior elevations. So it's just the site, and. Right. And then that's my comment, the site. Okay. The town doesn't know what it's getting on the site. But we're still trying to maximize the whole use of the piece of property for future use, even though we don't have any plans for it right now. We have enough on our plate with three I'm projects you, going on. Get back to why you couldn't, what would happen if you moved, why it couldn't be moved further north so that we can see you wiped out. Moving it further north right now, we are really at the max of what our sewer system could allow. At that point, we would need to definitely pump it, and we were trying to avoid that. If we move the building east to the uh, further to the north, we would still need to have our retention or detention pond in the same location because we're limited by what our overflow would be. If we were half, we would have to have it further down, then we would have to actually start trying to drain to the back of the property, which we really didn't want to do, um, because it's first of all it uses much more of the land, and then it, you're going into a resource area, and we really didn't want to go uh, that route. Route. Um, the other. We also left a certain amount of space so that there was some buffer between this use and the use next door. 
Um, but the utilities in particular are going to be are going to be limiting um, because if we move this farther north, we are farther away from sewer and drainage. From the edge of that building, proposed building, to that property line, straight across and in due north, mm -hmm. there's roughly 200 feet there. 180 feet, yeah. 180. The, from that point to the edge of the S turn, there's another 200 feet. And then from there to the southerly border, there's 340 feet. Mm -hmm. Right? The biggest part of moving that all the way to the north is the drainage to catch all the drainage mm -hmm. and to get rid of it. Yep. Also, again, and we're stretching it out, so we would leave, we would have to leave, the, even if we move this farther to the north, we would need to have our detention pond in the location where it is so that we can, can actually... Can that be moved slightly to the north too? As, no, because then, then we are, we're hitting, we're really right at, we're at 1% slope on this pipe, overflow pipe, and if we keep moving it, we were, and, and we are at the surface, we have a, a head wall uh, instead of a catch basin for our overflow. We are right at the surface. So the further we move it, the harder it's going to be to hit that overflow on the, on the catch and basin. To the south? To the south, it will be the opposite. If we move this to the south, we'll get closer then to, um, to uh, these. Uh, but again, it, starting with the fact that we wanted to have a... a Again, an in a clean intersection that had that um, public use right across from Stockbridge Road. If we flip this the whole way, then you have all the other issues that we've talked about before in regards to having the building right, um, the Barrados Bay right across from the other building, and, and any of those uh, issues. Again, I, and we're bringing in utilities. We have a driveway that can be used as a driveway that could go all the way through, or it could be going through here. There could be another curb cut here if you needed to. I don't think we've limited the use of the rest of the parcel. There is all this resource area on the back, so that we can't really use this part of the parcel anyway. So the best, now we've left all this open space there for any future use. Well, Carlos, I just have one comment. In other words, you have 340 feet for, uh, like John was mentioning, right there, 340 feet. Uh, if you had 350 feet, you'd have two building lots you could sell if you wanted to make all the money back for the town. So, but just, just the, a little aside. Why would you want to but sell? They've no, well, well, nobody yeah, assigned us. Uh, I'm just throwing that out. But I mean, nobody asked us to do that. So if no, we would, would have known, we, I would have cut the parcel so we would have front, all the frontages. I mean, I mean, I never had. If, if that was asked, uh, we would do it. I mean, we would not not do it if we were you asked. Know, my, my take on fire is going to town meeting. I, I don't think that's really necessary because the, the plans when I proposed this along with the fire chief were identical to that. The only thing, and here's the plan, by virtue design, the only you take that S off and go straight. This plan that was accepted, and like that. We, sh yeah, we showed everything to the taxpayers, at the town meeting, they voted for that plan. That plan and this plan are identical, but that little S. That's the only difference in that. And the land was bought for a specific municipal use. The selectmen, along with the municipal building committee, set public safety and fire priority number one. So it had priority number one on that property. The, the best use and thing for the town is that what the selectmen set along with the municipal building. Mm -hmm. I still, and really in my mind, I can't really totally accept that apparatus. And I mean, I went to even the North Hampton Fire Chief with this plan. I said it because they got a light on five and ten activated by the fire trucks inside and out. Okay. And I said, if you didn't have the light there, how would this be? He says it would be total disaster. Total disaster going on there. And, and of course, this road would never pull up the five and ten traffic. Yeah, the, the stop traffic on five and ten is what really requires that because if you have a light 
and five and ten there's so much traffic you could have cars being basically right in front of, a, of, of the entrance you but know right you, here if, even if that building was pushed a little bit to the north or all the way to the south and developed the north the drainage is going to be an issue on this par whole parcel there's no drainage at all going from this site to the back to the, to the west right there's there's it, there's a low point right right back here. Is there any water in that but then it that goes to the west? There, there is basically uh, this is our low point, this contour right here, and there is a, a section here that starts to drain into that area. So how, yeah. how big is the individual parcel? The what? How big is this Eight. parcel in dotted line? Uh, in dotted line, we're talking about approximately four acres, a little over four acres. What I'm showing in the dotted line, and I'm going off of the setbacks. Okay. Th anything that's really developable, not, you know, I could have gone all the way to the edges, but I really wanted to make sure that we were not, you know, so just showing that we were reality, here. Reality, Carlos, that building could be moved to the south, and there still could be another road for a DPW annex or whatever the town wants to do in the future. If you were moving this... Yeah, not going all the way to the property line. And the way the building's laid out, you can't expand that building to the south. That building can only be expanded. Well, by north. bringing it here, you're, you're kind of... Well, you would be limiting on anything that could happen on, on this side. No, because you still... That land over there, to develop... Right north of that. That's out of the out of the buffer line. No, way up in the corner, right there. It's wet back there, isn't it? It starts to be wet back there. But also. is it non-buildable? Um, for a driveway or anything on it. Where's your plan with the resource lines? Yeah, it, well, the resource. Also, once you're here, how are we meeting our utilities that are closer? To the I'm south. I'm talking about a road or if, okay, just if, say if it was DPW, could they use that all that extra land there? This this corner right like, here, I would I would say that 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 would be my. I mean, with having five, almost five acres of land here, I would not be seeking the one acre or, or little amount of land that we have here. If we have all this land to use and to access through here, I I really to me it doesn't make sense. And there's also a Again, some land farm here, so nat the natural land farm is there. We have a huge tree on the back. I mean, and then you have the resource area extending to that corner. Again, I think the, the main developable the area, area is all, all this. The resource area is that line with a loop there, right? The, the resource area, this well, is our... Right, that's, that's not... And they anything beyond that you can develop. Is that correct or incorrect? Yes, yeah, yeah, we, we could. We could develop it, yeah. I mean, this area right here, in theory, we, we could develop it. We are farther away from drainage and sewer and anything, all the rest of our utilities. So it would be really hard to drain anything, for instance, to go back to here. We would start having issues because we would need to drain into a resource area and that requires more, much more and more permits. So the ball fields are out there. Again, I think the only that reason where we had a ball field at one point there was to Nothing show the size of the parcel. Right but Pardon? Nothing is planned right now. Yeah. There was a... There was a drawing, yes, that the municipal that's builder correct. Really did show what could be possibly there and how much land is available, but it was not set in stone that that's what that was going to be used for. Okay. And I would just like to make one, one comment regarding the ball fields because that was presented to the CPA committee and I'm the planning Correct. board representative that they wanted the football fields there. But I said we already own the land in, at Hopkins, left field, right field, center field. So they went ahead and they have they're gonna put more ball fields out there. Correct. So so I'm glad that is not in conflict. That's no. all I was asked. Well I, me myself I would rather see just a line like it Mm -hmm. Buildable future land and don't throw no mud in the game because yep. that's exactly what you do. People start thinking, oh no, I want a ball field. Now what? Mm -hmm. And you get yourself a problem down the road. Yes. Can, can I just make a point too that you're talking about backing in? Um, if you go about two miles up the road, you got Sunderland Fire Department. 
and they back in all the time. I spoke to the firefighters there. They don't drive around and drive through. They back in after a fire, and they have not had an issue on 47 with backing into their fire department um, garage. So I just wanted to point that out too, that you know we're on the same line as them, same traffic. Um, so I just wanted to bring that well, up. Well, you know, another fact, why did they put a loop in a center station? But they oh, don't. For the right reason. But they don't the use it. They off the road. No backing. But they back in. They drive a loop. Spanky, which way do you bring your? Oh, I, oh, you're talking about our station. center station. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. You back in or not? We drive through the loop, yes. which right. is also the driveway for the fire fighters. Mm -hmm. right. Um, you're talking about the land that's north of the fire, the uh, new substation. You've talked about the um, abutters to the south and to the, to the east, but I'm the abutter to the north, and that doesn't leave a whole lot of abutter. I mean, uh, a whole lot of land um, between me and the station already. I'm, I'm going to hear the truck coming in and out you have the most. Feet, you have 180 feet between, between your property and the station. Right, but you're talking about about moving it over to the north more. No, it's what I said, it moves more. What's, there's always a complication if you do this or you do that. We're talking, so we're, we're, we're we're talking possibilities. What would happen here? What would right. happen here? Because we're just asking questions. And they're basically saying that moving it to the north is not, not, is not a good option because of all the problems that would occur with drainage. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Just so travel, so everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to talk about it. <clears throat> so this is either why you do it or why you don't do it. Right. Okay. Thank you. One thing I didn't see on the site, is there any power for communication on the site? No, there's not. No. Not in the plan, no. Not at all? No. No. What, what are you going to do for radio communication? We have a receiver to the north of, on the uh, tower there. Oh, the cross is across the street. Montgomery Rose, right? The old Montgomery, the old Montgomery Rose. Rose, correct. Yep. Okay. If we were to, at some point, need it, we have the uh, previous tower that we have from Center Station that got changed out. Oh, you still have that? Yeah. Really? That's a little to the way. Down the hand is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Can you ever see putting that tower up in that site? Not at this point, because we're actually looking at alternatives to that we're looking at microwave versus versus that and it would be a much higher higher level it wouldn't be well, so a tower so deal with the new 5G or whatever they call it, so okay. yeah some new technology we're yeah. looking at <laughs> Skinner Mountain not a tower any other questions from the board anybody in the audience have any questions or when all your house is set up. Yeah, my, my house is north of this station. The station seems to be closest to my house. Um, I don't mind the station. We need the station. I'm proud of our fire, fire crew. But my house is an old, old farmhouse that is train car style, meaning every room is one width. You can look out. If you're standing in the middle of the room, you can look out the the left side and the right side, it's not very wide rooms. They're what, maybe 14 uh, feet wide? And I have a lot of windows on the southern side. So, and on the other side. So you can see straight through my house. And there'll be cameras here. And my, I don't have a backyard. My, my whole yard, front yard and backyard, is my front yard, which faces south. It doesn't face, well, River Drive, it faces south. So no matter what room I'm in, um, I'm looking that way and all the noises come from that way. So I would, if it were this, um, this plot plan or mm -hmm. whatever you call it, yeah. I would like to ask if they could put, instead of these three trees um, on the north side of the station, to be a row of arborvitae. Mm -hmm. and, and not the pencil arborvitae, but the regular. A good buffet. Yeah, and to let them grow, you know, the tallest they could grow, just so I could have um, 
think not the noise as much and not the lights, the parking lot lights. We, we have a pretty good going. screen going around the... So the one, one good thing is that the, there's just a na literally a natural berm that's about six feet and almost three feet higher than the building uh -huh. right in here. Mm -hmm. So if any views from this side, you do have this kind of knoll that's in here. In addition to having plantings, we've also already added some, and you'll see on that, some are, um, some some other plantings too right. in here. Uh, could that be the arbor vitae going from the corner of the um you just of keep the bringing garage, it down. from the corner of the garage um to the end of the back parking lot? I think what she's mentioning is just bringing a, right. a row of arbor vitae. She's, she's, she's saying heading west. Is that what yes, you're heading, yeah, west. heading west from the front corner of the She's saying continue yeah, continue that run of arbor vitae. Yeah. Oh, just keep it going. No, continue it west, so it allows. Oh, okay, west, so it goes all the way back. So okay. are you are you fine with the three to, to trees? To the end of the parking lot. Right. Oh, okay, the, yeah. The back end of the parking lot, like two yes. trees yeah. out of the parking totally. lot. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. And and um and I see if they extend the garage, um, so they would have to be moved, uh, planted, so that they wouldn't interfere if you extended the garage. Yeah. So they wouldn't have to cut them down after. And then what we've done is they can be dug out so right now we have like four of them that would have to be dug out if, if the actual uh but they can be dug out and replanted but the idea was that we set back this line of them right far enough that so it wouldn't be affected yeah so yeah. I, I would appreciate if they would at least keep going up to the edge and and not the pencil ones and and maybe like a seven or eight foot yeah i know the, the ones to be planted yep and i know the ones Depends on the cost of them. Yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying yes. I'm just saying I understand. Yeah, I, I understand your concern. That the, the committee has to take care of it. So just to get a straight, so we're just going to continue a straight line. Yeah, probably another five more are yes. by just a straight line. Yeah. Yeah. Show it to the yeah. yeah, instead of the trees, because the trees will lose their leaf, but the arbor vitae won't. She was saying it's adding well, some oh, she's saying another thing on the back on the. Haven't pointed out. So, so if you want, we. My understanding was that you wanted these to be extended all the way to the edge of the parking, mm -hmm. and then these three. Also, you would like to not have about trees from from the corner here because this will your you might build. So mm -hmm. instead of having to put them here and they get cut out, you put them here. I understand. But, but start the arbor vitae from here and go like to two past the mm -hmm. the. Um, okay. And, no, and these that. are fine, these are fine, but as long as the arbor vitae started, you know, at the corner of the garage and back. Okay. Kyle, show the board. So now, what she's explaining is you have the arbor vitae, instead of um, having these two trees, have a row of arbor vitae that would stand, start with that second tree starts, keep going back, and go all the way back to the end of the parking lot. So there would be a buffer all the way. Why don't, why don't you just look? set the arbor vitae further north? And what, yes. what, what about if you put the arbor vitae on the knoll? They wouldn't have to be as tall. Oh, y y for sure. And if, if the knoll, if, the, if you're saying the knoll is pretty much useless land, yeah, but that's you're pretty flat in front of her house. Too. Yeah, but if you put the, put the arbor vitae or right you have to look over the when knoll you look to see straight the ahead head. that's fairly flat there isn't it right right yeah when you look straight and the berm is the yeah. knoll is right here how high is the berm one two three four five five to six feet Compared to the edge of her house, <laughs> yeah, it's line. about six, right. you know, five if to if six feet. If you put the arbor vitae yeah. on the knoll, you probably wouldn't need eight foot tall arbor vitae. You could put oh, yeah. four foot four tall, foot tall. Yes. and they're going to grow right. bigger, but from the get-go, they're going to be blocking the view. Oh, yeah, yes. You can't plant those trees under trees, existing trees. Oh, yeah, and there's no exist real existing trees right. up, to, up to back here. There's a big, big, big anyway, oak. Take, take a look at, instead of us trying to design it, take a look at what's the best way to do it. And yeah, then, yeah. You know, okay. Yeah, no, no I, I just wanted, I wanted her, the neighbor to understand uh, her concern so we could okay, take it into consideration. Okay. Just uh, one more thing I'd like to add to that. Um, I'm sure there's a, somebody else figure out where they're going to put those trees, but I know if you're planning on a 20-foot addition and then you put the trees 10 feet between the roots and the tree growing, pretty soon they put that addition on, they'll be killing those trees, so I appreciate if they bring it far enough away from the station so future they wouldn't hurt the tree if they put an addition on. 
Yeah, and we'd have to keep that in uh, the Yeah, and, and that's how we've been showing them right now. This is basically a adult sized tree, so of course a tree would not be like that when we plant it, and we've kept everything outside of the um, drip line of the tree so that the edge of the possible new uh, bay or extra bay would be outside of any of the root systems. So we, yeah, we've, we've accounted for that. We're trying to keep, keep the building away from those trees. Any other questions? Great. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm the uh, North Amherst representative on the building committee. I just want to thank the board for your consideration. And I hear that you're thinking very hard about this project. Obviously, I think it's a good project, much needed, given a lot of the new development in town and density is going up off of Shattuck. Uh, and I hope that it is allowed. Thank you. The lowest revised drawings of the planning. Yeah, um, I will. I brought today revised drawings from the comments that were done by the third party. Um, so I have a, a full set of, of revised plans. Any other revisions I would have to bring in then next okay. time. How far are you percentage wise on your architectural? Process? We're at 85%. How far one. are you on your architectural design? Well, yeah, we're, we're, we're both at the same. We submitted 85s and we're working on 100% right now. We're <laughs> 100% CVs, construction. Oh, oh construction. Mm -hmm. Construction. They're between 90 and 100, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, oh. is there, is there gonna, if there's any changes made to the site now or whenever the next meeting are, is there going to be any additional cost for change orders if this happens? I think that would be discussed. Yeah. yeah What's that? I think that would have to be discussed. Well, we'll stop about it. Well, it shouldn't be. No. That's... We'll need the drawing, just the revised planning drawings. Yep. Would you, you would not like these today. We'll just wait and have a full revise yeah, for the next time. Yeah, we're going to have some of these, some of those, some of these. I'd Easier one. One, one revision set. Yep. Um, the noise ratings of your mechanical equipment, that's going to be critical because you've got a lot of neighbors nearby. Mm -hmm. So you want to have the right noise attenuation yep. on especially the generators because even if they're not going to be running very often, they still are exercised typically once a week or once every couple of weeks. Sure, right. Midday when it's less... Yeah, but still, even, even midday can be cumbersome. Okay. You know? So whatever you can do to make sure that those are and as reasonable as possible. I know they're not going to be low, but I mean at least yep. not overly. There is some attenuation being purchased for the generators. So okay. there is, there's different levels of that. I don't know which level it is, that's why I can't answer you. Yeah. Okay. But it will be attenuated. Um, what else do we have? That's it. That's uh, it. I Something from the selectman regarding the. Oh, the tying, from the selectman policy. regarding tying into the drain. policy statement. Thursday. Yes. We have a meeting next uh, Wednesday night. I certainly would like to see if they're not going to move that station over a roof put in it so they do not have to back off that road and that kind of station. As far as I'm concerned, that's unacceptable. But that's what have had to happen if you put the station in in North Hadley Center on that other plan that you had. They would have to back in then. Listen. I, I'm just saying, John, that's Listen. the original plan. There was a back in. It was Listen. not a real turnaround down there. Limited plan there. And your town administrator screwed that whole project up. Oh, Jesus. Don't oh. tell me, oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Because there was a covenant on that land, and I asked them the day after uh, the CBA. <coughs> You guys just make more damn excuses than I ever heard, heard of. Every time it's just another excuse. Okay, so okay, three conditions. Yeah. Or three three items on the to-do list. Noise attenuation, planning, and I mean, yeah, select board policy on uh, drainage tie-ins uh, tie from development to the public system. And will it be 
a different rule for <coughs> municipality, municipal use, or the same rule for everyone. Okay. And I want to see that drawn on the roof. If everybody's satisfied with that building sitting there, not moved over, <coughs> the Stockbridge Road what, what, wasn't there. What, what do you mean by a loop? Just like that center station. So they drive in when they're coming back. Some way to they drive that. in. Oh, just oh, okay. No, no. You mean all around the back? They have no, one no, door. No, not around the back, door. back because the, there, there's only one door in the back. There's not two doors. There's two doors in the front, one door in the back. Right. So and you only have one drive. Which way is that truck going to face in the back? Is it going to face out to get out in the back yes. that way? It, it could face out the back way or it could face out the front way, depending Which on what way piece of apparatus it it's going to be. Which way What's is that? that set up? It's not set up that we will be driving the truck through when True. we come back from a call. It would be either backed off of 47 or you, we but spoke then, about you asking to look into different options for that. And if there's, you know, we had discussed doing a light in the center of North Hadley. And there's also, I did some research on some other departments and we could potentially put a small hammerhead. I think I talked to Phil about it as well to the north where we could pull in and have enough room to be able to back in there and not do a loop into it. So you could pull in the driveway with a, a hammer. Yeah. That, that, would, that would keep the truck off the, the road. The, the problem is with that, if you future expand, and if you move the S around, that's all you'd have to do is just fill in a green and you got another door and you've got access straight out. Right. A hammer is not going to do that. Huh. Well, if you, have, if you added an additional bay, you would have enough room to turn in the driveway with the truck as it was. So you could actually pull into the driveway and back in if you added another yeah. full. Sure. Yeah. Right. It's, how, how this is what we're, feet. I think, and that's the turning radius that would that would require to do that. So, what's that? That's the truck coming in, doing this, and then backing up into. So I was just checking, not designing really a hammerhead. I was just checking how much space I needed. So the chief is correct that if you had the other bay and this was a driveway. <laughs> it's an extra 10 feet that you would need to then do this. So basically the with the extra bay and the extra drive, they could also do that they type of movement. Yeah, but an extra bay may never happen. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Come on that. So I, the only thing, um, yeah, and what we were looking at, what would it look and how much ex how much we would have to extend the, that piece of driveway. So that was the idea of, of that. I want to see a loop put in there, like a center station, and what's that look like, and then allow that far enough back, if they expand it another base, okay. they'd be out of that. How deep is the station? As long as it doesn't cost any more um, money to the project. You stop it. Well, where are we going to get the money? Well, we're going to get, get, from, from we're we're get the money if that's what you want to do. Think about it. It's about well, to your house. Knock, knock. Yeah. About 75 feet. Okay. Because from, yeah, from here to here, 70, 75 feet, so a little bit. That's 78, so about 75 feet. <coughs> We're not doing a change order. Okay. Can you have that in two weeks? Yeah. Yes. First, first two of the emerge. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We'll design the same place. Okay. We want to. In fact, they do with my Valley Planning Commission. Probably, uh, I'm sure. I don't think it's going to take very long. We've got everything covered. And um, what's the town meeting date, Joyce? What's the town meeting? Yeah. First, 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 first Thursday in May. First Thursday in May. No. 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 That will be it, that's the day? I think so, I'm dead. If it's not the ninth, the second or the ninth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're not positive yet. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. Please.
you have the directive to draw from it? Yes. Okay. Uh, I got it. I want to read this. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we still have a meeting going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll come. I get an email. Yeah, I'll come. I get an email. 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 Joy, Joseph, you're the one that instructed. I wanted information about radius and all this other stuff for this for this project here. And this architect or this uh, so-called uh, project manager, he said, I received your voicemail from uh, approximately noon today, uh, noon time today. I understand you spoke to the project architect of the fire substation prior to calling me. I also understood you indicated to him that you would be calling me with the same inquiry. I understand your inquiry is who made the decision to locate the proposed fire station, fire substation in the location at the project property currently shown on the site plan already provided to the planning board for site plan approval. I have spoken to select board chairman, who is also on the fire substation uh, committee, select board liaison regarding to your inquiry. Joyce advised that I not call you back. I'm going to tell you something. Last time you threatened me, all right, about calling or what? I'm going to tell you something, you too, and you listen good. If you don't provide the facts which you get paid for, and play these stupid games that you play, just like not complying with the zoning before the senior center, you're doing the same damn thing here. And I'm not gonna vote for you screwing around like this. And you. Mr. Chair. Don't you, don't, I'm not done talking. Mr. Chair. No, I'm not done uh, talking. Did we not have Do not recognize her that yet. we were going to only go between chairs? Uh, when we were developing our plans between the senior center library and sub fire station, okay, that, that settles it. we were only going then to you be go between to chairs chair. for four votes from him. Do that. I'll see how that works. I had it with your crack. And you watch this guy. He's going to put a change order later, and then there's going to be more money. You're just already, like just like asking, the hundred fifty thousand dollars you spent for him and for your change order for. with your turnaround, John. What? You're already asking for a change order with your turnaround. You know what the problem is with you? You guys are running too fast, not walking. It's then with, it's with then we turn around and say, we don't like this and this is going to be changed. That's a change order. That's you're, you're your saying, fault, not my fault. You're saying and no. his, his His fault is you hired him to follow all applicable laws, state, federal, and local bylaws and zoning laws. He couldn't do that on the last project. But here he is running again. Instead of coming in here, when first we did this at the other one, it was right on our agenda. And I asked this board to put it on the agenda every time the plan board meet before it even got to town meeting. And they did so. So mistakes weren't made like they make today. And then you spend all this money to design, and then now you're going to redesign? You better knock that stuff off, because you're costing the town a lot, and so oh. is he. We are? He is. Who the hell said in here not to talk to me? It was you. Yeah. Is he lying about it? He doesn't. He doesn't. Did she tell you that verbally? He doesn't have to speak to you. Oh, he don't? No. Then I don't have to vote for it either, do I? Well, Without the information. I'm going to have all the information on any project that steps in this board or I will not vote for something that I don't know I don't understand it's up to for. them to bring you that information at your meetings you do not have to go running around going here going I'm here not, listen Joyce Jungle I'm not you I'm a researcher on everything I do you research this is why we that. hire people to give us the information <coughs> you hired him last time. that's what I said I don't want this running in a ditch like the last project and I change orders going in a ditch. that you had no problem. You didn't even ask him why he didn't comply with the zoning laws. Everybody I talked to, whether they're engineers, lawyers, and you paid them what? 
He was hired. I don't think I don't think we need to rehash all this tonight. We're not yeah, here. I, I think I, I think we're off the subject now. here. We're not on the sub fire no, station. No, listen, it's not personal. I gathered the information to try to bring it back to the It is board. personal. Good, good. You will see what the end result is. It was personal. So, so are we going to try to do this for March fifth? Or do it on March 19th. Yeah, or just six months from Desco. Yeah. We'll, talk, we'll talk with PVPC first and we'll take the first and go back to PVPC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'll be March 5th. March 5th. You got it, Carlos? Yes, March 5th. I'm going to be on vacation. Thank you, Jake Stas. Okay, well that are you going to be on the Yeah, Kate on that. They think we're gonna have to. Well that would be a reason for not to change the day. Because we're going to require four affirmative votes. Okay. With anything else we want to know. what? Do you gonna change? No, I just asked the okay. question. I didn't get a clear answer, so all right. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Do you have a couple of questions? Thank you. We have an invoice for Mexico for one eighty three point eight dollars. It's a freezing ice cube. <laughs> Hey, uh, fire chief. Okay. Hey, fire chief. Can we get a permit for a little bonfire in the middle to warm this place up during our meeting? Roll some hot dogs. Uh, we might as well break up the chairs. They're not going to be good for anything going forward. That's okay, chief, for you? It's cold in here. Okay. It's just different. I'm used to seeing you like we got invoice for Desco for the book. Yeah. <laughs> public notice, legal notice for 183 and 40 cents. And then we have another legal invoice for the publication of the public hearing on the proposed marijuana bylaw. And that one is for 309.46. So moved. Motion to pay. Second. 309.46. Mike's here. Mike's here. Mike's here. Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to pay is up. Good. And. We don't have any notes. The uh, zone by one is not in the model. Um, no, no, but I, I think I'll put them on. We don't have it as a. Let's see. Do we have it as an item? It's a uh, future discussion topics. Right here. To, 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 to the waiver, the amendment to prior action, and the zoning yeah. bylaw and development. That's more like general Maybe question. But let's put it. Let's put it under future topics. What's okay. that? Um, <coughs> so at the next meeting, yeah. uh, there have been a couple of proposals. Um, I think I circulated them to everyone, but I will double check that. Um, I we. Got an email from the town administrator with a number of proposed zoning articles, a couple of which came from the building inspector. One to redefine the parking bylaw. Uh, one had something to do with signs. Is it not? Yep. Yeah, well, signs. It was internally illuminated and blinking signs. So, signs, um, parking, and swimming pools. I thought we were going to ask ask him to withdraw that so we can talk about that and concentrate what we well, have in front Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, the, again, we don't have it down uh, for action tonight, so we're just taking it up as what we will be talking about under the future discussion topics heading. So uh, the bylaws were for um, parking, well, can't you just put bylaw um, so we can talk about any bylaw in there? I have it down. So leave it I can do it for a future meeting. I can't do it for tonight. Right. So, so then yes. why don't you put their uh, fire substation too? Um, if there's anything comes up with that. Well, we're going to be talking at the next meeting. We only got that, that is at the next meeting. 
May 5th, March 5th is the next meeting. Oh, that's the one that was final design? Yeah. Okay, and then the, there is a proposal that came through Attorney Reedy, I presume on behalf of his client, okay. to well, he, He's supposed to get it, yes, we can put that one down. Okay. That was a bit more clear cut. We did let it through. And what's he, what, what's he want on that? Attorney Reedy wants to rezone a parcel of land on the other side of the bike path on Middle Street that is not currently in the senior right overlay right district. Right huh? Right um, and rezone them to be in the senior overlay district, to add them to the senior over to extend the senior overlay district. And he wants that before. He wants to, he wants that for the annual town meeting in May. Is this sewer there, Jim? Yes. Yeah. And you're gonna put that on there? The how many how many articles that's gonna make it for town meeting? For a zoning article, we have potentially two zoning articles and two general bylaw articles that we are proposing. That we are proposing. If these go through, I believe it'll be five more articles. One, two, they can't possibly put these together and make a disaster. One, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five, five, five additional zone articles. I say his, let it be till fall. So. I'm going to vote for his for the annual town meeting. Yeah, we it, get it, enough it, on our plate. It's possible that uh, the building inspector may want more of a discussion on his proposals. As well, to I talked to him today about that, and he's, his intent was not to put it on the thing. It was for us to take it and oh, okay. think about it and talk about it. That's okay. That's, that's proper. That, that would make more yeah, sense. Yeah, that is it? not how the town administrator packaged it when he sent it to us. Right. Is that shocking? Um, so, uh, I will, um, I'll add an item for zoning bylaws. Yeah, and, and depending on what we talk about, we can always um, put that on that one. We may not get into a lot of discussion on it. Maybe on the 19th, yeah. we can ask Tim to attend and talk about his proposals. Okay, I'm just going to add it for the next two. Okay. The next That's two. fine. Okay. Are you going to add it on our agenda? I'm yeah. going to add it to the agenda, <coughs> just so we can talk. What's the status? Did you find somebody for the minutes, Bill, yet? Uh, no. Jennifer was out yeah. most of last week with a family issue, so I didn't get feedback from her. <clears throat> so I just Do you have any expected date when that can be done? I expect to hear, I expect to actually talk with her later this week. And we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to put zoning bylaws down for the second and the sixteenth as well. Oh, maybe a second is the public hearing on on the marijuana on the adult marijuana, right? And we'll probably have to have continue that to. A, a second public hearing. We also have to have a public hearing on the MS4 and whatever else. Whatever else comes up. Comes up. Right. So do you want to book that now for? Put the, they're going to have to put book that for the second uh, Tuesday of. It has to be the same April 16th. Right. Because if they have the town meeting on the second, we will do have another public hearing unless we schedule some special day, which we could. We need it. We should know, I know within a week what's happening with all the Okay. Uh, and you have the second was the public hearing again. for the adult. This is your our copy the only one? Yeah, those are all ours. I'm gonna Okay, so uh, one thing that came up, we got a, an email from Town Hall that um, oh, yeah. 
there, we had, uh, Jim had published for two public hearings, one for March 19th for DESCO and the one for April, April 2nd. And March 19th may be okay. May be okay here. But, but the second is probably going to not. Probably not. So, so we'll have to, rather than change the public notice, we can just change the date. We can just, we'll just we, we can post, we can change the we location can, like we've done before. Yeah. We can put a uh, tape, tape the location change to the rubble <laughs> in the yeah. parking lot. Yeah. There, we have a, many ways of getting that piece out now. So right. that looks like that pretty much fills up our. And I think you requested a, uh, is it Jennifer? Yeah. Of the first and third Tuesday for the duration in the town hall. Yes, going forward, uh, probably, definitely April and going forward will be meeting at town hall in the uh, upstairs meeting room right. on the first and third Tuesdays. And the plan room is going to be just to the west of that meeting room, right? It's going to be the corner office and front, front, the front corner office. Right. Yeah, they used to be what office? I couldn't think of Accountant. The accountant was in there for a while before that. Because the accountant was downstairs in, 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 for in the corner. In the corner. Right. Then they moved them all upstairs. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember who was there. But when we were in the town hall trying to think who was up in that corner office, doesn't matter. Don't remember. Okay. Anything yeah. else? So it will be, uh, you know, the, the Conservation Commission has already moved to the second floor in the foot. When we were in town hall, the office of the Conservation Commission was just next to ours, that little right. room at the end. They're back in there now. Okay. And uh, building inspector is going to stay up there. Board of Health is moving downstairs. Right. They're modifying into the, the assessor's office. Into the front office of yeah. the assessors. They're, 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 well, they're, that's not the front. That's the rear. Corner. There will be a second meeting space set up in what was the front half of the Board of Health office. Oh, okay. um, so that it would be possible to have a second meeting going on at the same time. A very small okay. meeting. A small meeting, but not every meeting Two people. needs the full table. <laughs> so that's going forward, so we'll be back in town hall. Do they have heat there? I hope. Probably can't be any worse than this place. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I think they do this on purpose because they go across there. It's 70 degrees in here. Well, you go, you go through the double doors and it's warm. Exactly. Mm. What do you think? In the hallway. I don't think open, right. open the hallway doors and let the heat come in this way. John, what's the responsibility of the heat in here? What's happening? Somebody shuts off <clears throat> a special valve here for us? I never found out the secret to that. Sometimes this kicks out warm air. Tonight, tonight it was cold air all night. I don't know. There was not a hot, enough hot air flowing around this meeting to warm up this building. Anything? Today. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. No. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Are you tired, James? You yawning okay. away? Yeah. Both. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Aye.